Hey guys, I hope you're watching. Um, this is actually for two friends of mine, Mr. Robert Bertels and Amber Trejo. Uh, I asked them if they wanted to learn how to make um, some red sauce. Uh, some people call it marinara, although it says it's not marinara because there's not a lot of spices in it, just a few. Uh, but this is just a simple red sauce that you can make. Uh, we've been making it for years in my family and I hope you like it. It's very easy. What you need is uh, one onion, you need uh, quite a bit of uh, garlic. Kevin, are you watching? Garlic, fresh garlic, okay? Uh, you need a little bit of oregano, probably about two tablespoons. You need some uh, salt. You need some sugar, uh, or you could use fresh carrots. Uh, you need some vino. <laughs> I want some wine, right? Uh, a couple of cans of crushed tomato. Uh, I prefer to use uh, Cento, but not a lot of places sell Cento. If you're out there and you know what Cento is, you know it's the best. However, I found that Red Gold does a very good job. Um, and so, with that being said, Kevin Palmer, uh, watch and learn. So, first you want to do, you want to turn your burner on, probably uh, about a level two, if you will, maybe a level two. Um, and hello, how are you, uh, Mr. Chaplier, Mr. Cron, how are you? Um, Kevin, what are you asking? Uh, no, sir, that's not processed oregano. It's actually fresh, <laughs> uh, grown from my son's garden. Um, with that being said, the burner's turning on. What you want to do, you want to get your onion, a uh, nice yellow Spanish sweet onion, and you just want to start cutting it, right? So basically, I just cut both sides off, make it very easy. Put these to the side, got my bowl for trash. Um, and in doing this, you just wanna take the nasty side of the onion off so you got nothing but a nice, uh, it's probably a medium size, I wouldn't say jumbo, but it's pretty good. Uh, you take it and what you wanna do, I just create some simple onion rings, right? Uh, what we're going for is a very rough chop. You know, you don't want a fine diced. I like, I specifically like um, a very uh, rough chop. The reason being is because as they're in the pan, you're sauteing them with the garlic. Uh, and <laughs> my wife is watching. Hello, baby. Um, so as you're going through it, you start sauteing them. And the larger, they're going to shrink a little bit. But uh, they come out very nice. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to basically... Uh, rough cut these onions and when I say rough it's a very uh, simple chop that basically means not too small not too big if you look let me show you some of it I did wash my hands by the way uh, so you're looking I mean that's pretty big you're looking at nickel size dime nickel size uh, pieces of onion but what you're doing you're taking them as the pan is heating up, you want to get a little bit of olive oil, right? Probably about two, two to three tablespoons. Put some olive oil in there if you want. And if you prepped ahead of time, you can make some um, olive oil that's actually got uh, herbs in it. And so as you use it, you throw it in there. For this one though, we're just using simple olive oil, very easy. Um, I'm telling you guys, this, this is a very easy, easy recipe. It takes no time, um, but as you do it, uh, I remember growing up, I used to hear people that they made red sauce and it took them hours. This doesn't really take hours. Now, uh, a good meat sauce might take hours, uh, but for this here, I don't know, probably ready in 45 minutes maybe. So I say that you can make it quick, you can make it fast, uh, make it a little bit faster than that, but you don't have to, right? So, in go the onions, take that up, I'll get my uh, wooden, excuse me, wooden spoon here. So I always want to start with a wooden, uh, wooden spoon. Why? Because uh, I don't like the metallic taste that others leave in it. So garlic, are you watching? Very easy, you just, I like the big chip, uh, plump, juicy garlic. Uh, you know you got a good garlic if it's brittle, if it's if it's if it can bend, and it's rubbery. No, you don't want to use it. Toss it away. But this is this is good garlic. What I'm doing, I'm just giving them a, a nice little smash. Give them some smash, and the reason I do that is because after they're smashed, check this out. Watch. You just take that clove out, 
and it's ready to go. Uh, I give a rough cut on my garlic as well. Uh, everything I give, especially when it's red sauce, is a rough cut because I like the texture. Um, if you don't like texture too much, then you probably want to do a more fine cut. Um, <laughs> I have more people that are asking for pizza. Um, if you know the Monteverdis, you know that we love to make pizza here. Um, and with that being said, uh, perhaps the next video that we do will be uh, our pizza recipe. Um, funny story, I, this, this afternoon when I was talking about posting my red sauce, uh, my son said, you're gonna share the recipe? And I said, yes, we're gonna share the recipe uh, because good things are meant to be shared, right? Hello, Miss Allison Smith, I see ya. Uh, ooh, Kulo's in the house, Andrea Kulo. Good to, well, I can't see you, but uh, I hope uh, you enjoy it. Uh, all that being said, okay, we've got the garlic here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight cloves of garlic. They're kind of, some are big, some are small. Um, but when I say rough cut, I want to give, I don't know, a couple of passes with a knife. And as you get it, I'd probably go down to about the size of a, a roly-poly, right? That's probably about the size I go to. I can really start smelling the garlic. It smells really good. I wish you were here to smell it, but you're not, and that's okay. But, okay, so I got some big pieces. I got some small pieces. And I'm going to take this off. I'm going to throw it in with the onions and the olive oil. All right, now we got that going. I'm gonna to start to stir it up a little bit here. And if you wanna see, it's really not a lot. Let me take the camera here, I wanna show you. It's, it's, it's not a lot when it's in the pan. You can see it here. But we got enough oil in there just to coat each piece as it's starting to saute. Uh, usually the oven's a little bit hotter by the time I put it in there, so I'm going to push the oven, uh, excuse me, the stove up just a little bit. And as that is starting to saute, we'll come back here. I'll tell you some more steps. So what you want to do, saute this and get it to a translucent color. The onions and the garlic both will start to hit that aroma. Uh, once this is done, there's different, different people do different things. I'm going to tell you what I do, okay? Once this is done... Uh, I then throw my crushed tomatoes in there, right? Two cans, if you know your can sizes, this is a 303 size, right? Um, and then after the red sauce, excuse me, after the sauce, I'll throw in the garlic, excuse me, oregano, I'm a little confused, um, some salt and pepper, throw in some little vino, would be quino, and then uh, this is what I wanted to tell you. So I use sugar. Uh, the only reason I use sugar is to bring the acidity down in the tomatoes. Um, but if you want, uh, my grandparents used to use uh, carrots, fresh carrots. They would throw carrots in there. The carrots are very sweet. It brings down the acidity of it. Uh, and at the same time, uh, it gives a, a nice little sweetness to the sauce. Um, but I myself, since I'm allergic to carrots, then I will use sugar. So with all that being said, can you hear it? Oh, sounds nice. Oh, so sexy. Can you hear that? I know you can hear it, that sounds really good. So let's see, <laughs> Amber says we're on the way, as that's uh, sauteing. Let's see if any of you guys have any questions. Who else, Miss Didi and Frank, hello, it's good to see you. Uh, it was good to hear from you, I should say. Uh, Lynn Marie, thank you for joining us. Stephanie is watching. Stephanie, this is a very easy recipe. You can make it for Ronnie, and hope you guys will like it. Um, if you're not making red sauce once a week, guys, come on, you're really not eating. Um, Oh no, we got Mr. Lasoli in the house. What up, Lasoli? Uh, so Don, hey man, you may make red sauce a different way, but uh, you know what? I'm not gonna say mine's better, but maybe one day we can compare the two. But let me see, what's Alyssa Lee saying? Trevor wants to know if this sauce is keto friendly. Trevor, give me a break, bro. Uh, we don't use those types of words in this house, okay? <laughs> Need more olive oil, is that what you think, Don? Well, I got a lot of oil, olive oil here and I'll add a little more for Don, not too much more, okay? I'll add about two more tablespoons just for Don because Lasoli is my boy. 
What else we got? Andrea Kulo says she needs pizza. Clint Cron, uh, you hear the sauce? I hear it too. That's really good. A nice, oh, uh, that just sounds sexy, right? So let's see. So we got the sauteing up. You want to do it now. If your garlic starts to brown, you've gone too far. You've just gone too far, okay? So you don't want the garlic to brown. That's probably why Mr. Lasoli wants me to put more olive oil in there. The more olive oil you have, the longer it'll take to brown, unless you have it on a really high heat. You don't want it on a high heat, people, okay? This is nice, low, and slow. This is, this is a Sunday afternoon type of thing, and Don, you know what I'm talking about when I say that. It's a Sunday afternoon ritual, if you will. As that's going, uh, I want to remind you again, and, and if, if, if you're out there and you know what I'm talking about, okay? Crushed tomato. This is a, a key to what you're doing. Some people can use, you can use a whole peel tomato, uh, if you use a whole peel tomato, you're really going to get a lot of liquid in that. Um, crushed tomato, red, red, red gold's got a good one. Cento is going to be your best one. It's a nice consistency. Um, now, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not uh, paid to do this, so I can mention names and whatnot, so it's not going to hurt anybody. Um, and then let's talk about salt, people. Salt of life, right? You see that? Look at that. That is what you call kosher salt. We... We don't use the table salt in this house. And the reason being is because kosher salt has got a good texture. Uh, this is what uh, Mr. Don Lasoli would call shellac, right? So uh, this is what we call shellac. It's a little bit of kosher salt, a little bit of pepper, and just a touch of garlic powder. And this is what we put on everything. I want to go back to the spices. you got salt, pepper, and oregano. That's really all you're doing, okay? And a little bit of sugar. Now, wine. Wine, I want some wine. Wine. Uh, wine is always good. Now, uh, depending on your taste, you have to use wine in red sauce, people. Because if you're not using wine in the red sauce, it's just not coming out right. Now, some people will say that they only put wine in meat sauce. I put wine in both red sauce and meat sauce. Two different things, right? But you can use any type of wine you want. Uh, I use a nice, very bold Cabernet Sauvignon, um, and the reason being is because I just love the way it tastes. Um, if I got a straw, I'd put it in here and start drinking, but I don't. Uh, you could use a Merlot, you can use a Chianti, you could use a Valpocella, uh, it doesn't matter, but Cabernet, probably the best way to go. This is still looking good. Cento is the best in my opinion. We cook very similar. Don, I love you for that. Okay, guys, look at this. It's looking nice. Onions turning translucent. We've got some bigger pieces here. It's looking good. My sexy wife just walked into the kitchen. I'm glad to have you guys with me. Um, let's see. Whose kids aren't 21? Amber, it's okay because the alcohol cooks out when you cook the wine. Um, but it's never too late to start drinking wine, Amber, okay? Uh, never too early. <laughs> oh, excuse me, it's never too early to start drinking wine, right? Um, anyways, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to throw in these two cans, two cans of crushed tomato, right? Be careful how you throw it in there with hot oil. You don't want to splatter everything everywhere. So if you want, little trick, throw the spoon in there. Kind of stops it a little bit from splattering. There's one can. There's two cans. The sexy sizzle will go away, right? So what I do, I want to incorporate the onions, the garlic, the olive oil, throw this around. What I will do is actually, I'm actually going to increase my heat a little bit. So I'm at a five right now. I'm going to increase it to about a seven. And the only reason I'm increasing it is that I want to bring it to a, a quick boil and then lower it again real quick. So then it starts to simmer because what do you want? You want that simmer. The simmer is the little bubbles coming up, right? This is also the time where I add my oregano. You can hear it popping. I don't know if you can hear it popping or not, but it's starting to kind of pop a little bit on the bottom. That means your temperature is pretty hot. If it's popping like that, if you raise it up, this is what you need to continually, continually stir the red sauce because if not, not only will you cause a mess, but it's just going to get ugly, right? So. So that looks good right now. Let me show you what this looks like so far, right? 
that's nice. Yeah, not too bad, not too shabby, right? So, all right, you're almost there, right? You're almost there, almost done. Let me see, Derek, what are you saying? Say, bro, tomorrow night is pizza night. Oh, it can be, it can be. That's all I gotta say. So I got about, I got about three tablespoons of oregano in here. I'm only gonna use about one and a half right now, maybe two. It's starting to really lava up, okay? So I'm gonna lower it back down to about a four, quattro, four, 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 four. Throw that in there. I'm gonna take about one and a half tablespoons of oregano. If you're not used to how much oregano you should use, go easy on it because you can always put too much oregano. When you put too much oregano, you ruin the whole thing. So it's, it's better to start with a little bit rather than a lot. So the thing is too, the longer your red sauce sits, the longer it cooks, the more that flavor is gonna come out in the red sauce. So there's my oregano, right? I'm gonna take, just for right now, now there's already a lot of sodium in, this, uh, in the tomatoes, but I'm just gonna take about a teaspoon of the kosher salt mixture, throw it in there. Now that I've got, I'm not gonna put my sugar in there yet because I wanna add the wine. The sugar to me uh, is the last thing. Zach, I'm glad you're watching because we gotta learn how to cook there, brother. We're gonna make you a cook real soon. Uh, next, I wanna take some of the wine, okay? Depending on how vibrant you want your red sauce, you can add half a cup, you can add a cup, you can add a half a bottle if you want, right? Uh, but again, I wanna remind you, Amber, remember, um, Don, we'll see you later, buddy. Um, remember that your alcohol is gonna cook out, okay? The longer you have it on there, the alcohol is gonna cook out, so don't worry about kids and your red sauce, right? Uh, I put about a cup, put about a cup of uh, the, the, the wine in. Throw that in there. Now, here's the thing. Because that straight liquid, let me show you here what we're working with, okay? It's going to add more liquefy, right? Uh, liquid to your red sauce. So if you like a thick red sauce, what you wanna do is cook it longer, simmer it longer, because it's gonna uh, basically take out all of that moisture. But hold on, let me turn, the, let me turn my light on real quick. There we go. Um, so the longer you simmer it, the, the, the thicker it'll get. But at this point, after you incorporate the red sauce, you just, you just give it that smell. Oh, it should smell really, really, really good. Um, but as that starts to cook, that's pretty much it, people. Now, here's another thing people can add to it. You can also add a couple of fresh ba uh, basil leaves if you want. Um, I like basil, but I don't like to cook it in my red sauce. Uh, sometimes it gives too much of a sweet taste to it. Um, and I like more pungent, more vibrant taste than I do sweet. Um, but folks, that's, that's pretty much it. That was easy. That was quick. Now, I know that we haven't put the sugar in yet. And the reason why is because what I want my red sauce is to cook for about 15 minutes. Like I said, the little bloop, 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 bubbles coming up. Uh, and the reason I want to do that is because I, I want to cook it so that the garlic, the onion, the oregano start to incorporate in the red sauce, uh, and then I get a good taste of it, okay? After about 10 to 15 minutes of cooking and little bubbles, uh, I'll give it a taste. If it's too tangy, that's where the sugar comes in, okay? If it's too sweet already, well, then maybe add in some more salt, some more oregano, but... It shouldn't be too sweet, trust me. Those tomatoes have a lot of acid in it, so it's not gonna be sweet at all. Uh, but again, the sugar, I'm adding the sugar not to make it sweet. I'm adding the sugar to reduce the acidity in the taste of the red sauce. Now see, that's good, that looks good. I'm gonna grab this one more time because I want you to see, check it out. See those little sexy bubbles right there, right there, right there, right there? That's what you want. That's what you call a simmer. But here's the thing. You do, you want to stir it every minute or so because you don't want anything to collect on the bottom of it. As it starts to collect, then it's gonna start to burn and you don't want it to burn. 
but you can see there's not there's not too many vegetables and whatnot in there now the thing is it's your red sauce you can make your red sauce however you want it you want to put more onion put more onion you want to put more garlic put more garlic um, but either way that's the beauty of the red sauce now I'm just gonna let that simmer for probably another 20 to 25 minutes uh, but yes I am still gonna remember after 10 minutes I'm gonna take a little spoonful maybe put some bread in there uh, and taste it see if I need to add my sugar uh, and if at that point at that point I don't need to add the sugar then we're good we're just gonna let it simmer the longer you let it simmer the more those tastes of the onions and the garlic and the oregano are gonna come out same thing with the wine if after about 10 minutes on the simmer you taste it and you think you need some more wine put some more wine in it and it'll all be good all right guys that's it that's all we had I hope you guys enjoyed it again a very simple 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 recipe um, and if you want, uh, we do a lot of cooking in this house. We do a lot of baking in this house. So if you guys, uh, man, if you want us to do anything that you want to see how to make, man, just let me know right on my, uh, right on my timeline or right whatever. But uh, perhaps maybe pizza next time. And I say that maybe because pizza is a waiting game. You got to make the dough, then you got to let it rise. Maybe we'll do making the dough. Hmm. Because the pizza sauce is easy. It's just tomatoes. That's all it is. Shh. That's a secret. All right, guys. We'll see you. I love you. We'll see you. Bye-bye.